there's kind of an old joke about the legislature that they spend the first few days in a good mood building and nurturing and loving on the relationships that they're going to destroy in the last month of the session. I'm excellent. Right. Could not be better. That's awesome. If well, I can get you to sign here, this is for your ID. And there's a wife's ID in there as well. Awesome. And three keys to your office. Woo! My son's here, my wife's here to help me move in, and it's the final culmination of what we've worked so hard for. How are you? Good, how are you? Thank yeah, you. it's finally moving day. It's a long time coming. Like I said, uh, we're so excited to finally get it over with. It was a long campaign over a year started running in March 2017. So it's quite amazing to be here now, almost two years later. Oh my goodness, Grimkin. Nervous isn't the right word. I, but I heavily feel the responsibility of this office. There's a little bit of anxiety, but it's just the beginning of a place that you feel where, it's where you're supposed to be. So it's a good feeling. It's a feeling of excitement and like you're almost on a launching pad. I think we've got a good freshman class coming in. I'm excited. We've uh, spent a lot of time together already, and I'm just ready to go. It's important to me that we don't have a session like last session where whew, there was almost a fist fight on the House floor. There are a bunch of things that happen before a session begins, and one of those is called the Biennial Revenue Estimate. It's a state controller's first official look at how much money will be available for the two-year budget period that the next legislature is going to write a budget for. So Glenn Hager, the controller, came out the day before the legislative session started and said, here's how much money you're going to have. For 2020-2021, we estimate state revenue available for general purpose spending will be $119.12 billion. The amount of general state money is up 8.1%, which is pretty good news. He threw a couple cautionary flags on it. He said oil and gas is volatile, uh, the markets are uncertain, and trade with Mexico, China, and a bunch of other things could affect Texas. So, but with those caveats, he gave them a pretty good estimate, said you're gonna have several billion more dollars than you had two years ago. Don't go crazy, but you're off to the races. Thank you for joining us on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, or maybe our website. We are today streaming the start of the Texas Legislative Session. So the first day of session, we always get really pumped up, ready to go. It's an exciting day, ready to get started, ready for the 140-day sprint that is the Texas session. And then the first day is just kind of ceremony. It's the first day of school, it's picture day, you know, it's not a lot of actual news is made. The Texas House seemed to be almost as civil as the Texas Senate. Of course, in the House this session, you had the first uh election of a new speaker in 10 years. Members from different political leanings got up to the mic to offer their support. And then when it came to a vote, um, they unanimously backed him. There being 147 ayes, zero nays, and pursuant to the Constitution and laws of the state of Texas, I declare the Honorable Dennis Bonin of Brazoria County to be the duly elected Speaker of the House of Representatives of the 86th Legislature. Namously elected House Speaker. Not a big surprise, but news nonetheless. This House is the possession of all Texans, and it is our privilege to serve all of them with passion, pride, and a willingness to put the common good above all else. Thank you all, and God bless Texas. This is my first time to be here when we change uh, speakers. Uh, I think it, the speaker's remarks were exceptional. And, and you know, I, I appreciate his message. They're like, look, this is not about you. This is about the state. Uh, we all knew who was going to be the speaker before we got here. And Dennis has worked hard at, 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 you know, bringing everyone together. And that's what we needed to do. I don't want to be like the United States Congress. 
the first day of the legislative session. We're here in the Texas Senate where not much is going on. Uh, members and their families are filing in. We're expecting a swearing in and a welcome back from Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. Welcome everyone. You all look great. It's wonderful to have everybody here today. I know many of you are wondering why I am up here. Um, the Lieutenant Governor asked me to inform you that he is not going to be able to join us today at the opening of the session. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick is not healed today. Um, we normally don't get a lot of news in the Senate on the full stay, but um, we were just told that he is currently at the White House. We learned that night through a statement from the Lieutenant Governor's office that he was in fact in Washington, helping the President's uh, team in writing uh, the President's remarks for his Oval Office address about border security. There is a growing humanitarian and security crisis at our southern border. On day two, when Lieutenant Governor Patrick, Speaker Bonin, and Governor Abbott were all together uh, for a media briefing, Patrick was asked about it. It was a very late ask, and uh, it was a tough judgment call, but uh, when the White House calls, you respond. It was, it was pretty huge. We were trying to ask people who were veterans at covering the legislature if they ever remember one of the chamber leaders being absent, and I don't think anyone really could. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm the Lieutenant Governor of Texas, as long as I can be. Right now we're in the first part of the session, so this is all roses and peaches and unicorns and rainbows. We'll get to the ugly part later. We're all servant members of one body. We rely on one another. Each belongs to all the others. We're all called, we do our best to do the right thing, and we should try not to waste time doing it. Let that be the legacy of the 86th regular session. They always say if you don't get goosebumps when it's this time of year, then you probably shouldn't be doing this. 